second case is very similar to example one but now we're going to work with some numbers but again what we're going to be doing is when things contact charge redistributes when things are brought near you'll see charges try to move and if you attach a ground they will move so here we have again three identical insulated spheres z y and x it's nice to say that they're metal what they're saying by insulate is to ensure that charge just doesn't um, spontaneously decrease. They're insulated, so whatever's in it stays with it until we're contacted. Have their initial charges as indicated above. If Z is touched to Y, then to X, what will the remaining charge on X be? Well, let's run through the scenario. So again, we have Z. It is 2.0 times 10 to the negative 6. It is touched to Y, which is minus 6.0 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs. So if we were to figure out the net charge at that point, so we have 2.0 to the negative 6 minus 6.0 to the negative 6 should give us a net charge here of negative 4.0 times 10 to the negative 6. Since they're touched, one being positive, one being negative, what will happen here is because Y is negatively charged, electrons will move from Y to Z and Y will become a little less negatively charged and Z will become less positively charged. Now what we want to do is divide this evenly between the two objects so what it leaves us with is negative 2.0 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs per object. So that means when I take Z out of there. It no longer has a charge of plus 2. It now has a charge of minus 2.0 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs. And now I'm going to touch it to X in this case. So if it contacts X, X has a charge of plus 4.0 times 10 to the negative 6. That gives us a net charge of 2.0 times 10 to the negative 6 positive. And then what we're wanting to know is what the remaining charge on X would be. Again, it'll distribute evenly, so that's why we divide by 2. And you will get a positive 1.0 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs. So if we were to look at those individual charges, X and Z will each have 1.0 times 10 to the negative 6 and Y will have negative 2.0 times 10 to the negative 6. So you could be asked any one of those values what would X be, what would Y be, what would Z be, and that would be a multiple choice type question. These are always multiple choice questions. They have objects being the same shape, being the same type of material, so that charge will distribute evenly. There are some assumptions made in here, you guys, that I want you to understand. We have identical spheres. They're all the same shape because charge would concentrate differently on different shapes. And they're all made of the same material because if you were reading in the notes, you'd know if you had a different material, it would have a tendency to either hold electrons or lose electrons because of how the bonding structure works. It's called its electron affinity. Some electrons are bonded tighter within the atom, so they're not allowing electrons to move as freely as other objects do. And because these are metal conductors, we're allowing the charge to move freely from one object to another. So all of these assumptions have to be made 
before you can do the, these kind of calculations. So figure out what the total charge is in each situation. Divide it evenly if it's on contact between the number of objects and then go to the next situation. Again, get the total amount of charge divided equally between each object. In this case, I'm dividing by two because I'm contacting two of them. It could be three or four or five of these things touching. As long as they're all touching to each other, the charge will distribute evenly.